up over here are the Boy Roosevelt elk. Oh, yeah, yeah, Roosevelt yeah. elk are not, I repeat, not native to Alaska. Mm -hmm. They have, we have the third smallest deer in the Americas. They're called Sitka black-tailed deer. And they're only about 70 pounds. The only deer smaller, people from Florida, is the key deer in Florida and the access deer in Hawaii. There's only two smaller deer. So the hunters and miners in the 1930s said we need another source of protein. Your deer are too small. So if you know anything about deer or elk, if you give them food and a place to live, the whole state would be overrun with them. And they knew that. So they put them in two places, a Fognac Island and Kodiak Island. Man could hunt them, bears could eat them, but they couldn't escape. It was like they were in Alcatraz. So they are not breeding. The only animals that they breed at this park are the muskox and the wood bison. These are just orphaned animals, not endangered by any means. And the other thing is, is they're not native to Alaska. But they're here. These animals right here are the female caribou. People ask, what is the difference between a reindeer and a caribou? They're actually the same species. Reindeer are from Europe. Caribou are from North America. Why you can eat reindeer, reindeer sausage, reindeer hot dog, and you're not gonna find caribou on any menu. Reason being is because reindeer have been domesticated. You can only eat domesticated animals. The one thing you might notice about the female caribou, look at, they have horns. It's one of the few deer species that the girls have horns as well. A lot smaller than the boys, but the girls have horns as well. So last year, they accidentally put a teenage boy with these girls. Nature happened. Two babies were born. The baby's names were Immaculate and Conception. <laughs> they said, whoopsie daisy was taken from the last time that that happened. Oh. Now when they feed them, do they actually go into the fence area? No. No, well, these are all still wild animals. Okay. They put their feed, they put it over, over the fence. They have the little things that they do. Annoying. Especially like the bears. You notice the bears, there was that path. They yeah. throw the food over the fence. They've, nobody's ever been with the bears at all. Those are still wild animals. So this stream right here, this is the Placer, I mean the Portage River. Okay, that's the river that we saw going down Portage Valley. Notice this gazebo in front of me at my 12 o'clock. They got a grant last year. They're gonna be building a brand new Beluga Whale Educational Center. On the other side of that gazebo is another river that's called the Placer River. That is the river that flowed into Explorer Lake, the first place we stopped before we went on the boat. So there's two streams and all the salmon, we're talking late September, October, all the salmon in Cook Inlet and Turnigan Arm school up here before they go into the streams to start to spawn. So if you have all the last bit of fish, all the bluegills will be down here feeding on them because that'll be their last bit of fresh fish for seven months until the hooligan come back. And at the bottom of this sign over here, it says help protect the beluga whale. And look below the beluga, it says reward $2,500. Everybody and their mother has a drone these days. And a few years back, people were trying to get drone footage of the belugas. That's fine and dandy to do with a humpback or a gray whale because they don't use echolocation. But doing that with a beluga, it was interfering with them feeding. And belugas are critically endangered. So initially they started taking the drones away. And then they were still doing it. Usually it was young males and they were getting upset about it, but they were taking the drones away. And then what they started doing was fining them $2,500 offering a reward of $2,500 catching anyone using a drone to try to get footage of the beluga because that was interfering with them feeding. But right here where they broke ground, this is where that beluga whale educational center is going to be, right out in this area. Anything to make the park better, I'm all for it. So you guys are in luck today because the wood bison are up close to the fence. Normally they, they're far away. So the dominant bull is in there. The dominant bull has a big huge hump on its back and he has a black head with some awesome hair. He has like emo hair. His hair is right in his face. You're gonna notice his hair. He's the one with the big hump on his back. He's feeding right now. But you see when he puts his head up. But all these little wood mice in here, these are all the females and the babies and the dominant bull. He is the father to all these young. Wow. So what they'll do is they'll take a the females that did not have a young the year before and he'll mate with all of them in a separate pen just like the moose and the bears they only have babies every other 
year, not every year, it'd be too difficult on a female's body. <laughs> so the dominant bull, he has his head down, but look at his hair. Look at his hair in the grass. Mm -hmm. So the one with the big hump on his back. I don't know how he can see because that hair is going right over his eye. And all these babies were born in May. And as of yesterday, there was eight baby wood bison. Uh -huh. So you're looking at some of the only known wood bison in captivity. I would definitely get a picture of this while you're here. We're not going to get out and look at them because they did not, they tell us, they told these people to not get out of your vehicle next to the wood bison because we have diseases they don't want and they have stuff that we don't need. And the whole thing is, is these are such critically endangered animals. Yeah, they're cute. See, these are some juveniles that are one years old from last year, the ones two that are fighting and they're with their mom still. But after next year, they'll be with the male herd. Look how cute those babies are. <laughs> they're adorable. Yeah. Look at the babies having we are here too. See all these plants over here to the left? These are called Alaska bluebells. These are our state flower. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful colors, purple. could but that fence is electrified oh. so I, I've had six children when they came here as cubs they've got shocked by that fence it's like a child you tell the child don't touch the stove the stove is hot what does the child do touches the stove but guess what the child does he only touches it once yeah. so they got shocked when they were young so now they they don't mess with the fence <laughs> So when we come back at the end, we're gonna go see the bears one last time, and then there's three paths. You're gonna take the middle path, you're gonna walk across the bear path, and you're gonna stop at the very end. I can't park right next to the, the very end of it. I have to pull up about 50 feet. But I'll drive around, and then you'll be able to get pictures of the black bear right above. And maybe the brown bear could be over there in this area. They've made a den site for them, but the bears haven't used it the last two years because we have had above average snowfall, so they dug their own den. But if there's a fence underneath that bear path that divides the black bear and the brown bear. Because like I said, if, you, if the black bear or brown bear, if a brown bear or a grizzly bear came across a black bear in the wild, it would eat it. It's on the menu, black bear tastes delicious. So when you walk down the bear path, which see these people don't know, there's a bear right down here, right in this corner. And his name's Kobuk. He's sleeping in his little recliner. There's, he's, he's right on the other side of the tree. You'll see him from up above. If you look right in the corner there, he's down in this corner there. You'll see him from up there. He's always there. So these little deer on our right hand side, these are the Sitka black-tailed deer. They are full grown. So think about that, they look like fawns. They look like this baby deer, but these are full grown Sitka black-tailed deer. So you got a deer that weighs 70 pounds or the Roosevelt elk, which is the females over here that weighs 700 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that's why the Roosevelt elk were here is because the miners and the hunters said, we need another consistent source of protein. And that deer right there is actually a huge Sitka black-tailed deer, but it's still small compared to a mule or a whitetail.
Yep, yeah, it's yeah, called velvet. So their antlers are growing and all the way till the end of August. The Roosevelt elk, their antlers are growing up until one inch a day, a half inch on each side. So this plant right here, this is not the Alaska bluebell, this is called a fireweed. So the fireweed was the plant that the local Alaska natives used as their calendar. You have to think about it, before the European settlers here, they didn't have a calendar. So that fireweed starts blooming at the bottom of the plant. When it's halfway bloomed, that means summer's halfway over with. When it gets to the top and it's fully bloomed, that means summer's done, get ready for winter. And the thing about the fireweed, it'll never lie to you. If the fireweed blooms early, that means it's gonna snow early. You know, in the East Coast, they have, what, what is that, Groundhog, Pocatawney Phil, or whatever it is. We don't have that here, but the fireweed will tell us if it's going to snow early, and the fireweed never lies.